record and good morning everyone. Welcome to this WIOA Workforce Wednesday webinar. My name is Kirsten Bayer with the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support at Illinois State University. Um, I will be your moderator and your technical support for today's session. Um, today we are going to be discussing responsive problem solving for short and long-term wins um, and hearing from um, adult ed um, and Title II. So we are excited to hear from them um, and be discussing all of their tools that they have to share with all of you. Uh, a couple things before we get started. This session is on Zoom webinar, so you do not have the ability to unmute yourself as an attendee. Um, to fully participate with us um, throughout this webinar, we ask that you post any comments, questions, um, concerns to the chat. Um, or the Q&A, and we will be checking those throughout the session um, and answering any questions that come through. And then we'll have some time um, towards the end of the session for any Q&A as well. Um, this session is being recorded and it will be up on our Illinois Workforce Academy website and Illinois WorkNet within about 48 hours. Um, so you can uh, access the recording and the PowerPoint slides there. Um, I will put the slide deck uh, that our presenters have prepared for us today um, that's up on our website in the chat here momentarily once we finish with our housekeeping items. Um, and then we do have for your full accessibility or your note taking purposes, we do have the live transcript um, and subtitles on for you. You can turn those on utilizing your Zoom toolbar um, that you have access to as well. So I'm going to go ahead, we will start off, here's my lovely, my lovely title and headshot. Um, and then we'll start off with our beginning polls. So first thing we would just like to know from our audience today um, is just where's your local area? So are you joining us from the Chicago area, up north, um, central Illinois, southern, statewide, um, kind of generalized, but just to kind of give us a ballpark where you're joining us from today. Um, I'm joining you from Central Illinois. I know some of my other fellow presenters are too. Um, we have Kathy Olson Tracy joining us from the Springfield area. We have Amy Julian joining us from Bloomington Normal. Um, and we have Sarah Goldhammer joining us from down south. And Tara is up north, I believe. So they can talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I'll go ahead and end this. You can kind of see where your fellow attendees or somebody might be next to you um, in location across the state. We have a couple people from all over. So we are statewide today with our audience, which is great. Um, and then which partner do you best represent? Um, some of you might primarily be joining this session for Title II, which is great. Um, but we also like to touch the other titles as well. So if you fall more into um, Title I or Title III, Title IV, or if you are other WIO partner or stakeholder, or if you are a state or local workforce innovation board member. So we'll give everyone a couple seconds to answer this poll, and then we'll get started. While everyone is finishing the poll, Sarah, I'm gonna stop sharing if you wanna pull up your slides. And then I will hand it off to you. Go ahead and end this poll and I'll share the results really quickly. Most of you um, are joining us from title one and two, but we have a couple people sprinkled across the other titles as well and our other partners. So welcome everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your Wednesday morning to join us. Um, and we look forward to sharing this presentation with you and all the, the tools. So I'll hand it off to Sarah and our other presenters to get us started with the presentation. Thanks, Kirsten. And I'm going to actually hand it right over to our fearless leader, Dr. Kathy Olson Tracy, to get us started. Good morning, everyone. I am really happy to be here today with this amazing team. Um, as you will see throughout the presentation, there has been an extensive amount of work in reimagining outreach and recruitment. Um, the pandemic certainly made us reimagine how we reached our, our audiences. And we have had almost two years worth of um, work collaboratively done by our professional development network to work towards um, increased outreach, increased recruitment. 
So you're going to hear about um, where our project began and then where we landed with a statewide outreach campaign led by the Adult Learning Resource Center. Um, some incredible work we began this project with um, from our PBN, from SIUE and ICSPS. Um, so I'm so pleased to share with you, but I do want to start with our end result. In FY22, we're just wrapping up our reporting numbers, so we have a lot of work yet to do, but what we do know is that we have a 40.5% increase in student enrollment from FY21. So um, we are stepping back into coming closer to some pre-pandemic numbers. We have a ways to go, but uh, a 40% increase in enrollment in a year when we still had some significant challenges is really a testament to the work um, established at the foundation by Dr. Amy Julian and Sarah and their teams. And that wrapped into some of the leadership and exceptional work by the ALRC and full capacity marketing. So I'm very pleased to share with you the work that we've done so far that you can capitalize on and copy and uh, modify for your program or your um, partnership. Go ahead. So as mentioned, I'm Dr. Kathy Olson Tracy. I'm the Senior Director for Adult Education and Literacy. And with us today as presenters are Dr. Amy Julian from ICSPS and Sarah Goldhammer from SIPDC. And in our audience um, as members, we have members from the ALRC staff who led the um, statewide outreach campaign. So you've got voices from everybody who kind of led us through this remarkable um, increase in student enrollment. Okay, thank you, Kathy. So let's get started looking at what our goals are for this session. And, and really, we want to give you a holistic story. We want to tell you the story of the last few years. So uh, Kathy started with some good news and some good outcomes that we have to report now. But it was a, it, it's been a long road, and it's not like the road is over. So that's one of our uh, stories that we have to tell you is that we continue to look at how can we use what we've learned to continue to um, set the foundation for the next year and to make sure that we continue our problem solving process. So in that storytelling, we hope to review responses and problem, sol problem solving steps in adult education to address needed outreach to potential students. And that is over a period of time. We're going to spend a fair amount of time reviewing uh, resources that we created to support adult education program that includes promising practices from the fields, um, some website redesign, modified messaging and action plans. We're going to explore templates and tools that are from our new outreach campaign that and specifically how programs are using those and how other people can jump on board. Um, Amy's going to talk about for our partner programs, how can you be a part of this? We want to share both short term and long term wins, struggles and next steps. Because as I said, we, we are continuing to support our learners, our teachers, our programs, our communities. And so it's not a one and done. It's not like, okay, now we solved a problem, we're ready to go. We're gonna talk about how are we continuing for the future? So I'm gonna throw it over to Amy to start the story. I'm gonna take you back to 2022. I'm sorry, 2020 and we're speaking 2022. And we started and it was a dark, cold day as many days were in 2022. And we're realizing that the world is upside down. We're having issues recruiting students. We're having issues with programs being able to find students. Students are looking for programs and the, and the traditional way in which they looked for programs was physically coming to campuses or physically going to buildings. And we're not doing that anymore because it's 2020. So we decided to move forward from that dark, cold day in um, 2020 and move into the light. And we needed to embrace this problem solving approach. So Kathy came to us and said, we, we have this issue. We, we cannot figure out what the programs, what we can do to help the programs. What, what are we gonna do? So we identified the problem, that's the first thing. So when we looked, we said, okay, what are the problems? And we identified the problem as dec declining enrollment over several years. So this is not something that started with the pandemic, but this is something that was really highlighted by the pandemic. We also had exasperated um, 
data issues by the pandemic and really sharing and access by the pandemic. And then led to a recognition of needs to revamp the traditional recruiting message and really revamp the way in which we reach our students. The population has changed and the pandemic really did highlight that. And how are we reaching our students? Where are our students at and how can they access our programs? So we moved from this caution slippery sign into some innovative practices that Sarah is going to uh, share with you. And then we're going to walk through 2020, 2021, and where we are with 2022, because progress is being made. And um, it's just an exciting journey. But at the same time, as Sarah said, it is still a journey. It is not something that, woohoo, we're done. But we have to celebrate along the way and celebrate our wins as they come, because that's what keeps us going. So Sarah, I'm going to hand it back over to you to tell some of the success stories. Right. And so speaking of celebrating the wins, one of the best ways to celebrate is to hear from our students, because ultimately, when our learners succeed, we succeed. So um, as we before we start the story, we're going to hear a couple of um, student voices, because that's important to keep them in the forefront of what we're doing. And so uh, this comes from Elgin Community College. Let me um, it's a very short video with two people in it. So let me bring that up. I am Sandra Jo. I am from Cameroon, Africa. ESL is like we have a combination of a huge background from Mexico, Venezuela, even from Asia. People who are immigrants and they are learning a language, they want to know that while well, it's possible to come here not knowing any type of English, but you can still take in your classes. When I'm pursuing what I'm trying to do, people behind me or in front of me will see like, actually she's doing it, I can do it too. And then here we have Evelyn, um, one of our high school equivalency students. I am Evelyn Aguirre and I attend Elgin Community College to prepare to take my GED equivalence exam. I am a single mother of three kids. I do a full-time job. I strongly believe that obtaining my GED, it'll help me build a better future for my kids. I really want to inspire single mothers out there that think that it's too late that they can't do this, you can. It doesn't feel like I'm going to school. I love it. All right, awesome. And that is inspiring to hear their voices. So those were created fairly early on during um, the pandemic as some of the early outreach. I did, y'all, before this session started, I went back to the Elgin website this morning to make sure that they're all still there and they are. So I'm happy to report that um, some of the things that happened was an elevation of just thinking about the importance of the messaging and the prominence of where this information is located on a website, very important. Here's another success story. So that was from a community college. We also have a fair number of community-based organizations that serve in adult education. This is one from Podair Works. And you can see on here their YouTube channel, some of their social media that they've done. And they, they just did an awesome job. They, they created this YouTube channel where they could not only share with viewers, but also allow for comments and communication. And we'll come back to Podair a little bit later on, but I can tell you that um, from having a conversation with them just this past Monday and thinking about how they are continuing to evolve to reach potential learners and to STEM with our new outreach campaign that we're going to talk about later. So it's, it's wonderful to see kind of that evolution of thought of how can I reach our learners. And then the last success story before we move on, this is from Joliet Junior College. And you, as, as they said, a picture's worth a thousand words. Um, so they have made an effort to capture and highlight fun moments that their staff and students have had. And I think you cannot look at this screen without feeling it, feeling the fun, feeling the positivity and the engagement that comes from the way that they um, are in relationship with their students, their resilience, their passion for their learners and their learners' success. So that's just some of the things that we wanna celebrate. And let me get you started telling you a little bit about um, the, this process. We kind of started, but let me just um, kind of recap. So we had the support from Dr. Kathy Olson Tracy and the folks at ICCB who knew we needed as a state to do something different. We needed to step up. 
So Kathy um, empowered our professional development team to gather, disseminate information and tools. And kind of some of what you saw there in the success is the com uh, combination of that. Uh, we were able to systematically shine a light on what was working in the field because there were a lot of success. And I meant, as I mentioned before, those really are the true heroes. So the students and the, the programs that stepped up. So let me also add to this that we would not have been able to shine that light if we didn't have strong relationships with our local programs. The only way that we can really be successful in supporting them is to know our teachers, to know our administrators. We're talking, we're learning from them every day and thinking through how can we best support them? How can we um, help elevate their success? So Kathy, why don't you tell us a little bit about the key components? So as we're, as you're looking at the um, examples that we showcased a few minutes ago, you're looking at marketing that's happening through YouTube. You're looking at marketing that's happening through Twitter. I saw the hashtag find my flock. You know, there, there's a lot of different ways that we need to reach out to people. So we felt that um, bringing everyone on board and talking about what needs to change and how we reach out to people was an essential starting point. So we created a strong message um, for our learners and our institutional leadership. So there's a lot of communication that went out to our institutional leadership and program management. It was all about how do you rethink and re-envision recruitment? What are the strategies? How do we showcase success? and then clearly setting out expectations. You know, I recognize that we've had challenges in the last a couple of years, unprecedented challenges, but our students need us more than they've ever needed us before. They need to come out of all of this new world with the skill sets to be able to work in this new world, to be able to connect to services. So while our world changed, our students still needed us. And that's the messaging that went out to our learners, we're here for you, to our program administrators, we need to reach people in a new way, to our institutional leadership, there's still a requirement that we continue our mission of adult education. We were always providing high quality programming. It shifted during um, the height of the pandemic to remote learning, but it was still very high quality. So how do you message that to students? So we put a strong effort out into making sure that messaging was clear, concise, relevant, and guided us in our mission achievement, you know, our performance metrics. What are we here for? What do we need to achieve? And what do our students need? And then we put that messaging out to say that our world is shifting. Let's not forget our enrollment was declining prior to the pandemic. Our world is changing. The pandemic pulled that Band-Aid off and we need to, to look at new ways to reach students and not necessarily going to community-wide events, although those are still relevant. They weren't relevant in a, a pandemic, but they are now. Um, or hanging flyers up or other traditional methods of marketing are still relevant, but what are the new ways to reach people? And how do we move people that were very comfortable in traditional methods, hanging flyers up, public speaking engagements. How do we move them into new ways? Twitter, digital marketing, updating websites, all of these things to recruit these new students. So that messaging was very clear and it began with what are our goals? What is our mission in adult ed? And we need to stay true to that. That is our North Star. What are we here for? And then how do we get there in this changing world? So I want to begin with that idea of messaging. It's consistent across the state. So we all have a shared mission um, and shared resources to get there. Sarah. All right. So um, I'm going to give you just a real brief overview of the process, and then we'll unpack each step as we move forward. So we work to reach each other throughout the pandemic and first with a series of engaging webinars. And they varied included um, a panel style approach with people from the field sharing uh, 
practitioners giving their key technology tools for engaging students and covered a lot of ground. Uh, we even touched geofencing and key marketing tools in these webinars. And then we were able to focus on helping everyone to get their websites more effective. And Amy's going to tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. And then it uh, culminated with a carefully crafted sequential series of webinars for our providers. And we made all the recordings and toolkit available on the website immediately. And we can share that um, link with you. Let me go ahead and turn it over to Amy, who's gonna talk about our recruitment series. And then we'll share if you wanna look at any of those recordings and where those are. Just posted that in the chat. And yeah, so as Sarah said, like we, you're like, wow, you started with this and then you went into this and then you, yes. We did. It was one of those things that we started and we're like, okay, so we began each webinar with research based information and then we spotlighted the good work from the field. But I want to say that that was very intentional. Like we wanted to come out and say, hey, this is what the research says you should do. But you all know as well as we do that if you see another program doing this, if you see a success in another part of the state, you're more likely to implement those changes because you see your peers being able to do that, being able to share. So what we did was we went and we asked, we surveyed the system, we reached out, we said, what's everybody doing? What is working? What is not working? And if you have something great that's working, are you willing to come in and share that? And by come in, it's 2020. I mean, get on a Zoom and share that with us. So the first series that we went to, we looked at Facebook strategies because that was where a lot of our students were, were on Facebook. We talked about geofencing and what that looked like. So if a student was in your area, how do you set up geofencing on Facebook to allow you to get to your student population. We developed a kit for that because there were a lot of programs that say geofencing sounds really exciting. Can you give me a one, two, three, how to guide? And that's on that website that I just threw into the chat. And then we looked at TikTok videos and YouTube strategies because again, people were in their homes at this time. People were accessing information, not necessarily in that regular eight to 4.30 day. I don't know about you, but in 2020, my days were like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And, and I was not looking for a program. So how do we find our students where they are, meet, where, meet their needs, and then bring them into our programs? So I will say the research strategies were fantastic, but the real meat of this, the real heart of this was bringing in the local programs and having them share. And you'll see that on those webinars and having them share how they did it, what their best practices were. And so then we're gonna hand that back over um, yep. for the engagement and retention story. Because yes, there were three different series that we did. So following the recruitment series, we followed that up with an engagement retention series, three additional webinars. And the topics you see there on your screen and um, you know what we heard from our teachers with, that they really were very concerned about their learners. We need to take some time. We need to make connections where it was difficult to be connected. Again, we gotta kind of put ourselves back in that time and space. And so the topics that we covered in those three webinars was taking time to care. And once again, that was from voices from the field, practitioners sharing with us information. Classroom strategies for getting and staying connected, that engagement piece that's so important. And I think it's important to point out that none of these topics are no longer important. They're all still very uh, viable and important um, in today's world, even though we are opening up some. And lastly, harnessing technology for engagement. And I want to point out, although it's not part of this webinar, we are still continuing to support our field. And we've got a couple of measures in place as teachers are more um, in person Let's not lose the benefits that we've got from harnessing that technology. I'm pretty sure if we did a poll, everybody would say that we're better and have more technology tools now than we were two and a half years ago. Um, some things we learned we didn't want to or at the speed we wanted to, but we're here now. So let's use those. And plus we keep getting additional tools. So we continue as we think about those long and short-term goals and long and short-term successes. Um, one of the long terms is to say what we've learned, how do we continue to use that to support our learners out there? So those were the engagement retention series. And then Amy's going to tell us a little bit about the website webinar. So what we heard from a lot of programs was we need help with revamping our website. We need help with prioritizing our website. We need help with making adult education be a priority on, say, our institution's website. So we did a webinar and really teams spent time working with individual programs to enhance their website. So 
this was not just a one and done webinar. This was something where you could come in and listen. And then we did technical assistance with those programs. We looked at different issues from different perspectives. So looking at the type of program, community colleges have different, I'm gonna say red tape, than say a community-based organization or a school district. And one of the things that we really wanted the whole system to acknowledge is that as we are in the upside down, we have this situation where people are coming not to our front door, but our front door has become our website. And that is something that, I mean, if you take nothing else away from today, that is something I really want you to take away from the day that look at your websites and see if what you are sharing is the information that you, the people who are looking for your programs needs because that's where they're coming first. They're not driving over to your program. They're not gonna be knocking on your door. They're clicking through the internet and they're finding your website. So what we did during these effective webinar series was really spend time with the programs on as to how to elevate your program. So if you're on a community college, is adult education on, a, on the front page of the community college? If you're on a community-based organization, is your programming or for you, are your trainings available? Our Title I friends out there in, in the internet today, are your programming, are your trainings available on that front page? We found, and the research will tell you, that people don't want to click through. They don't want to do 22 clicks. They want to do two. So if your information was not within two clicks, you were losing students. You were losing potential students or potential clients or customers. So what we did was really work with the programs as to how to elevate their websites and modify their websites. Now this was all happening through 2022. And then we started into 2021 is when we moved into the adult education recruitment plan. And so this was a big, not a paradigm shift, it was just a slight shift. Everything had been voluntary through 2020. Everything had really been responsive through 2020. And then in 2021, we said, you know what? Let's put some meat with this. Let's, you know, we have this great framework. We have these great best practices and look at some framework. So the adult education recruitment plan is a five-step continuous improvement process. So if you're familiar with the continuous improvement process, you're seeing this and saying, wow, this is not you know, rocket science. And no, we don't work for NASA, but I don't have to get a, a, a space shuttle launched this week, and they do. So what we're looking at, though, is helping adult education programs organize, explore and research, understanding impact, acting on what they've developed, and then reviewing and reflecting. So we walked the programs through, and the next slide there will kind of show you um, the process that we went through. And so I'm going to let Sarah, and see this, I'm going to let Sarah talk about that. But this is a process that's used and had been used by a lot of our community college programs. Continuous improvement is not new to adult education. We just, what we did was we focused it on marketing and recruitment. We focused it on what they would be doing to really have their adult education recruitment plan. And it was named that. It was, and it was an action plan. It was how do you get from point A to point B? So Sarah, not meaning to talk over yet, but go ahead on your. And Amy, your, your passion is showing <laughs> how excited you are with that. Um, but, you know, Amy's already laid out for us the importance of having a plan, the importance of thinking through steps. And again, I want to take you back to that time. A lot of what we were doing was reactive. So it was great that uh, in Kathy's leadership, had to say, okay, hold on, we want to take a look and let's do some systematic planning for the future. So that, I mean, some things we didn't have a choice, we had to be reactive to, but let's really make sure that we're looking at first at that process, we understand what our goal is, um, we need to understand the process and the expectations. We also looked at a gap analysis, we wanted to make sure that everybody was understanding where the the problem areas were that we could address that. One of the things Amy mentioned was, you know, what's your, where do you show up on a website? Um, how does the clickability rate, all of those kinds of things really do play into our recruitment plan and building for the future. So what are the next steps? Provide direction. And then our um, ICCB helped with the, the leadership of helping people. It wasn't just like, hey, here's a tool, now use it. We had additional uh, technical assistance helping people think through what would be a successful submission, what's realistic for them to do, and how can they implement those, those pieces. And Amy, I, I, I want to throw it back to you. Is there anything additional that you, because I know that this is your passion, is there anything addition that you want to share? Well, I want to say that, I mean, we're going to give you the resources for the toolkit, but I want to say that it was then tied back to their 
plans as they planned for FY22. And so it wasn't just something that, and, and I commend Dr. Kathy Olson Tracy's leadership on this because it wasn't something that was just done in isolation. It wasn't just a nice to do. It was the agency recognizing that we have to make a change. And then we had had a lot of most responsive to intervention. And you know, that's always easy is to say, those people who are already doing it, let's highlight the people who are already doing it. And we showcased them through 2020, but through 2021, we made it a priority for everyone. And I think that's where we're finding that success and that 40% increase. Um, so what we have, these documents are all available for you on the website and they're also be available for you through this, but it's the adult education action plan announcement. Then there is the continuous improvement plan. This is a fillable PDF that you, if anybody can go on and use um, the continuous improvement plan as a word doc, so if you wanna manipulate it and change it in any way. And then we have the final action plan and then the final um, action plan as the model itself. And so those are available. We made them available both as a PDF and as a Word doc. We allowed people to customize it as they needed. But it was one of those things asking, what are you doing? How are you going to implement this? What is this going to look like? And then to ICCP's credit, as they moved into FY22 and their plans, they ask about it. So then it was reinforced with the credentials or with the, the power of ICCB. So we did find some success and we actually had programs telling us this was great. This helped us focus. This was exactly what we needed, um, which is just really great to hear because we really was intended. I mean, it's a continuous improvement model. It's to help colleges and programs and partners focus on continuous improvement. Some additional resources that we had um, for our action plans and for programs as they were trying to move ahead through some pretty troubled waters um, was our promising practices. And we're really proud of those because all of those came from the field. Again, there were people who stepped up immediately and started changing the way that they were having um, providing instruction, changing the way that they were um, engaging with students. And so we decided to, to elevate that. And so we created a promising practice sheet and this is a little screenshot of it. It says a rising tide lifts all boats. So it's, you know, that the fact that we want to make sure that we partner with each other, that we learn from each other. Um, also on, on the top slide there are the top bullet points says COAID move ahead with adult education campaign. For those of you who are not Title II adult education, COAID is our national professional association and they have this um, campaign going on. And so some of what we're gonna share with you later kind of dovetails off of that with our statewide campaign. But in the meantime, we have found, as I mentioned before, it's really important to be talking and hearing what the field is doing so that we can elevate that. That's what we did with the promising practices. We continue to do that. Again, we're no longer reactive. We have this plan and we're moving forward. And one of the things that we're excited about is every two weeks or so, we have a Friday feature on social media and adult education, and it lifts up and spotlights some good work that's, that's happening across the state. So that's one of the good pieces that we saved from our pandemic days is how do we make sure that we elevate the voices of the people doing good works of our programs and of our students. And so to build on that, let me, let's me let hear from some of our programs. So again, these are recordings from some of the pieces that were provided throughout the state. You'll see a good representation. You're gonna see some of the same people that you saw before. There's Poder over here and there's Joliet Junior College, but we're gonna start with Elgin Community College. And this is Elizabeth Hobson and Ashley Zeman from Elgin Community College. And they're gonna highlight two goals from their action plan. So Amy, Amy was telling you about the action plan. Now you can kind of see it in work. And they, uh, two of their goals was to generate awareness of adult education programs to generate interest. Um, and one of the things that was their goal was to include moving adult education to the front page of their college website and to capture increased student information via the online inquiry form. So this is just a couple of minutes long, but I'm gonna bring this um, recording up for you so that you can hear from one of our awesome programs. So the two goals of the marketing campaign were first to generate awareness of ECC's adult education program in order to generate community interest and second to gather interested student information using the new online inquiry form. 
So in adult education, we know word of mouth is really powerful and often the best marketing that we can do. So, but also awareness is very important, especially during COVID, because we wanted people to understand that adult ed classes were still available, but they just looked a little bit different than um, people were used to. So we developed a robust marketing plan with many tactics, and I'm just going to talk through some of those today. Um, First, we really wanted to share some stories of students. Uh, so we found um, an ESL and HSE student and we filmed 30 and 60 second video testimonials with these students to share their stories. These were leveraged across our digital advertising efforts on Google, Bing, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, we also featured adult ed classes prominently on the homepage via a homepage banner. We mailed uh, postcards to the district explaining when they could enroll and how they could enroll in classes. And we also expanded our language list to our top 10 languages in the district. So previously we had just mailed to Spanish speaking households, but we felt there was an opportunity to expand that list. We also purchased um, radio commercials on one of our top Spanish radio stations in the Chicagoland area, La Ley. And along with that buy, we received some free public service announcements that helped extend our reach. We also purchased print advertising in local newspapers and in Reflejos, one of our bilingual publications in the district. We also featured adult ed messaging on interior ads within our bus routes in the district. And there was a QR code where they could go to get more information and, and reach that online inquiry form. We also supported Elizabeth and her team in promoting virtual information sessions about the programs. We talked about the programs in Impact Parati, our bilingual resource guide that's mailed out to the district. And we also featured information on our electronic signage, interior and exterior throughout campus, on organic social media, Google My Business. And we also talked it up at community events whenever we were attending events for the college. So here is an example of our homepage banner, um, very prominent messaging about ESL and HSE classes and when they start and they can learn more for more information. Here are some examples of a print ad. This is Evelyn, a real student with her family and then Sandra, another student. This is the Pace Bus interior ad, as you can see with the QR code where people can snap that picture and be brought right to the landing page with more information. Uh, fall 2019 and spring 2020, we're down a bit from previous years. However, are still good baselines and provide a goal for post-pandemic enrollment. As the pandemic began ramping up, uh, we decided not to offer classes in the summer of 2020 and instead staff focused on developing online intake, orientation and enrollment processes. Additionally, that summer, faculty teams developed over 25 online courses. The first semester we offered classes during COVID-19 was fall 2020, and we had 582 students. Not including summer, which always has lower enrollment, we have seen a steady increase since then. Uh, this fall, we have 1,116 students. Since we started using the online form in the summer of 2020, we have had 5,276 student inquiry forms submitted. We are still working to improve our processes, but are very happy with the upward enrollment trend and very appreciative of all the work put in by marketing staff, as well as adult education staff and faculty. All right, so thank you to Elgin. And now we're gonna to go to Poder, which already were introduced to them early on in this presentation. And you're gonna hear from uh, Griselda from Poder Works, who's gonna spotlight their online registration program, also talking about their social media, including YouTube channel, texting, and connection options. And I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna hear about them one more time because we're gonna continuously weave through this presentation after Kathy takes us through the new outreach campaign. I wanna give you some information about how they're using um, the outreach toolkit. Was our online registration portal where individuals are able to come into our website, click on the login register, and they're able to start 
adding contact information, and then begin the registration process to our programming. We're able to help them complete their placement exam, and then from there complete the registration process while our staff then gets an email and lets us know that a particular person has either started the process or has completed the process, which gives us um, a great lead to connect with them and say um, what happened if they weren't able to complete that registration. So it's a wonderful thing to have, and I do recommend adding an online registration component to your website because it does facilitate um, registration and it does eliminate a lot of back and forth between the potential student and your staff when it comes to submitting a full registration. Now, with all of our recruitment efforts, of course, all of the ways to connect with people, they're increased, right? And so we're able to then connect with them again through all of the social media platforms, as well as call or text to the same number, which is very important. And then also through our website, um, YouTube channel has been a great way to connect with the community as well, because they're able to view um, study tips or mini English lessons or ways to connect to their classes um, and then have the opportunity to ask questions right there and then in those videos. And then we're able to respond and provide that feedback right away. And sometimes that, that finishes off with an online registration. So it's a great way to really utilize all of the social media platforms and have them all connect back to a registration process. Now with that comes, of course, social media growth. We've grown tremendously through all of our different channels. These are the different tools and resources that I utilize um, for recruitment. I utilize Canva to create content, later to schedule my content. And then we used to use easy texting to be able to provide text messages and communicate via text with our students. Um, but we soon realized that the free text messages that we were getting with easy texting was just not enough. And we found this new texting um, software called ZipWhip, and they actually integrate with our CRM. We use Salesforce, so we're able to keep track of all the conversations that we have with our students via Salesforce. So it's a great tool to utilize and to have, but if this is something that you're still not comfortable with, I recommend easy texting. is a great way to get your feet wet with um, communicating with your consist consist constituents via text messaging. Um, and at no cost to you. So um, think about those options, these, these different tools and resources that I've shared with you. And um, again, to just give you an overview and a quick um, idea of, of some no cost items and at cost items that you can do, whether it's in the short term or long term for your recruitment efforts, I hope that this um, particular slide really does help provide some guidance or some support in a way um, with your recruitment efforts. But again, you know, I know I went through all of this information fairly quickly, but you are more than welcome to connect with me. And y'all, that is one of the lovely things about our adult ed world that are always willing to help each other out. So I love that she was sharing her information there at the end. Um, and then the third and final for this slide is Joliet Junior College. I mentioned them before, how they are engaging and connecting and communicating with students. So let me bring up the final video here and share this with you. One of the things that we want to emphasize is the use of text messages when you're wanting to be innovative in recruiting. Um, we use text messaging for recruitment of bridges and ICAPs. We also use them as a reminder that enrollment is open to previous students and for letting them know that they have testing appointments. Everybody has a phone, everybody will has um, their things pushed through their watch. They may not answer their phones and they may not answer your email, but they will respond to a text message. Keep it short and simple with a good contact. We also on occasion will boost posts, especially around enrollment time. And here you can see that when we boosted a post, we reached uh, over 7,000 people, which is quite impressive in my opinion. 
And that was a great way for us to really get our message out to others that we are ready to accept students. And we'd love to spotlight our students and our community. In this first picture, we took a student who had just recently completed her GED exams and asked her to share a quote and picture to inspire others. And this one was heavily shared because we know that our students have a lot of friends and they are proud of themselves, so they wanna share it. We um, did a lot of Facebook Lives to make sure that students and the community as a whole knew that we were still open during the pandemic and what kind of programs were running. So this middle picture shows a Facebook Live with the Plainfield Library. And we just recently realized that they are sharing that with the Plainfield District teachers who share this as a way of introducing library services. And in this last picture, we have our own Michelle Lyman, who um, was one of many who shared quotes of inspiration. As we returned to campus, we wanted to remind students of who we are and um, give them a little bit of motivation coming back. And as important as recruitment is, retention is very important. We know that students, um, word of mouth is our very best form of recruitment. And we want them to feel that connection with their teachers and with the staff as a whole. So this month, we're excited to be hosting a virtual open house where we are inviting students to join the staff and they can ask questions about our program. And we are going to explain to them how our jobs help them. All right, so again, we wanna thank those three programs for sharing with us. And as we continue to move forward, I do want to, it's important to me to make sure that we have a downstate presence. So um, I don't have the recording that I'm gonna play for you now, but for those of you that are downstate, I'm in Edwardsville. This is from Kaskaskia College. And you'll see some wonderful statistics here of their Facebook and Instagram campaign. And they're continuing this. The good news is, as this is something they did, they had not done before, they put it in place. I'm just gonna give you a couple of highlights. $400, and they reached 29,000 plus individuals. They engaged with 2,400. They had um, 299 reactions, shared 163 times. And so just it resulted, this last part is, it resulted in 98 new students in the program at Cascadia, Cascadia College. So awesome results. Um, and so it's been throughout the, throughout the state. Um, I will mention also as we move forward, and Kathy's gonna, I'm gonna turn it over her in just a second to tell you about the outreach campaign, but just kind of that, the gap time between the early information that we shared with you and the outreach campaign, we did, um, continue to support programs and their continuous improvement programs and their plans through FY22. We had our conferences, our Forum for Excellence, which is coming up again this September, but last September we made sure there were connections there between the um, recruitment and engagement and outreach and the Forum for Excellence, and our, then also our Transitions Academy that's held every fall. There were those connections there. We provided a technical assistance through the outreach campaign, and I'm gonna turn over to Kathy to tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you. So what you've heard so far is um, very strategic um, direction and guidance and programs sharing out what worked for them. We are again reinventing um, how we're moving forward with digital campaigns, digital marketing, online resources. But we also recognized we needed to, to provide more support to our programs. So everything that has been shared thus far can be done at the local level, whatever um, type of program you're operating in. Enhance your website, develop portals for students to access your material showcase through digital tools what you're doing. Um, those are beautiful. But we also then um, built a statewide outreach campaign. 
This was um, developed by the ALRC, the Adult Learning Resource Center, and they partnered with a company called Full Capacity Marketing. The Adult Education Outreach Campaign is unique for a couple of different reasons. We had our adult ed programs who were asking for a statewide um, campaign. They wanted to rebrand adult education. We had a year long advisory council looking at strategies for recruitment and outreach. And their um, request at the end of their uh, time together was that, that we developed a statewide campaign. So in response to the needs of the field, in direct response to their request, we developed this outreach campaign. And when I say we, that really goes to um, the leadership team, Sue Borowski at the ALRC and Selena Shands at Full Capacity Marketing and their associated teams. They built um, this outreach campaign on all of the premise we've, we've laid out thus far, digital campaign, digital marketing, um, capacity building, sharing of best practices. The campaign was aligned with our vision. Um, and when I talk about recruiting students, it is also implied that we're retaining students long enough for those students to meet their gains. So recruitment is the kind of the first leg of this stool, so to speak. Um, to, to build on that vision, we created a statewide out campaign, outreach campaign with the partners that we had. And then the SIPDC and ICSPS took that um, work that was built by ALRC and full capacity marketing and provided program specific customer, um, program specific assistance, technical assistance. So not only do we have experts leading in the design of what we're um, putting out there for people in this new campaign, this new branding of adult education, we also incorporated um, program specific technical assistance. This is necessary because we're looking at a, um, not only an outreach campaign, but what makes this unique is we're, we're also building in new ways um, for programs to reach students and that capacity so that those programs can take this on their own in a, in a year from now. We'll run this campaign all the way through FY23. Uh, next slide. So the, the outreach campaign is very, very comprehensive. So we came up with the Your Path, Your Future brand for adult education. And I have to say, we didn't just come up with this name. There was a lot of market research that was put into this, a lot of effort coming up with a campaign that resonated with our population. So even before we put this beautiful landing page together, and I'm using the term we a lot, but again, I'll point out that that really kind of was led by the ALRC. But as we developed this campaign um, tagline and this lovely landing page, there was a lot of work that came into what does that design look like? What is that logo? What is that tagline? To make sure it resonated with our population. So we have this wonderful landing page where students will fill out their interest form. What's really great about this is now the students can directly connect to the programs themselves because this will take them to a website that tells you how to connect to a program. It allows students to fill out their information and have contact come back to them via email, or they can even request to talk to somebody and actually work with a live expert. So there's a lot of ways to connect to those students. So everything we say about universal design that we talk about in the classroom, as we talk about in our curriculum and instruction, as we talk about in our models of delivery, we built into this concept as well. So there's multiple ways of connecting and multiple ways for students to connect to us. So we, there was very intentional design here. Next. Sorry, Kathy, do you mind if I take them there real quickly and just show them this page? And people can go as well, but this, I'm gonna scroll down and let you see kind of what Kathy's been talking about, that there's different messaging because different people have different reasons that they might be coming and um, desiring training. Again, if you wanna go view this um, 
site. It's awesome. I think Amy put that in the chat. So feel free to do that. But that gives you just a little idea. And thank you. And then would you like me to take them through the toolkit? Kathy, that would be lovely. You want to say that? Okay. That would be so, lovely. The toolkit also, here's the awesome thing about the toolkit, y'all. It's, it's um, we're going to put the link in the chat for that as well. You can access that. I'm going to take you through a couple of just highlights, uh, but you really do yourself a service and go and check this out because I think there's like 52 different resources. It's, it's a lot. I'm going to start with um, the media fact sheet. So let me show you that. A couple of things that's, that's really um, awesome about this is number one, it's customizable. So each program, if they want to, can put in, you can see, insert your organization's name, here's your website, um, those kinds of things. Also, I wanna show you page two, there's this wonderful infographic. Now, take a good look at your screen because this is gonna come around in just a minute. Amy's gonna show you because as we think about how can partners use this, how can we leverage um, the resources from each other, which is exactly what we should be doing under WIOA. Uh, this is one of, one of our partners use this in an awesome way. So we wanna show you that in just a minute. So keep this one in mind, but let's go back and I'll show you they also have some great resources for social media posts. Um, you know, what we heard from programs is we, we don't necessarily know how to do these. So it's laid out with some verbiage to use. Um, if you want to promote all of your programs, if you want to earn, learn English, if you want to finish high school. So here's information to support for social media posts. There also is, and, and I want to just illustrate for you the diversity of the different resources, because here's a radio script. And I would call this a little more old school. You know, what, what would I say if I was going to be on a, on a radio program as versus what am I going to say for social media? There's also posters. Uh, let me take you and show you that. Again, this is the, the Sarah Goldhammer tour. You take your own tour and look at all of this because there's a lot of great information. Um, here's one I'm going to highlight. And there's there's different ones, but let me bring up this one because I love learn new skills and get a better job. That's particular specific messaging for certain people who want training to be um, upskilled. I want to point out also that programs can put their own logo in here. So there's the branding uh, that Kathy showed you, but then if individual programs want to put it in, they can as well. Okay, one last thing I'm going to show you. Um, is the flyers. And two things I wanna show you about the flyers, there's many things to see, but the two things I wanna show you is, number one, many of these are available in different languages. So that is very helpful, depending on the messaging that, that people are trying to share. The other thing I wanna to show to you, again, it's customizable. Um, remember, I mentioned to you that Podair was going to come back when we talked with them on Monday, one of the things that they said is they felt good about their social media presence, um, and didn't feel like they needed to necessarily increase that. But one of the things that they took from this outreach campaign is how to stylize their images of their learners so they loved the way that the the student was looking at the camera, the student was seemed to be speaking to the potential um, learner that's out there that could be recruited in. And so they went back, they didn't decide to use their own learners, but they started to stylize them in the same way that they had from this toolkit. So there's just so many different ways, rich ways that you can use this information. And I'm gonna take us back now. And remember I told you to take a look and to be aware of that, um, infographic. So Amy, tell us a little bit about how this was used. Yeah. Have you seen this before? Is it, are these things, things that you have seen around? Because our wonderful partners at Illinois WorkNet did post this. Um, they featured the campaign on LinkedIn just recently. So you are seeing this information. They have the hashtags in there. And that infographic is from the toolkit. So there are great ways to use this. Um, to not only market adult education, but also market your specific programs in adult education. And then if you want to look at that next slide, I want to show you just kind of highlight some things. This is the pathway toward better future starts with Parkland College. You see right there, 
and I'm circling with my mouse, but that does nothing for you. Parkland's logo goes right in there and then finish what you started in high school. So this first one on your far left is a bus billboard. So you can put that in like a bus stop and such. And then the other one is one that's just a regular social media post or something that you can um, have a digital ad or a website banner and that's there as well, but they are customizable. So you see the ITTB logo under finish what you started in high school and then the Parkland banner, the Parkland logo there. So we want you to see the ways in which you can use this. I am so excited with how this has turned out. And this, again, it started as just little nuggets of ideas back in 2020. And this has really been, um, thanks to the leadership of ICCB has really come full circle, circle and has become a fantastic outreach campaign. So I do want to um, talk really quickly. The outreach campaign toolkit came from a request from the field where we asked our programs, what do they want? What do they need? So there is a lot of responsiveness in the design of this campaign. It is a direct response from programs asking for help. How do we navigate this new world? How do we recruit in this new world? So we started with continuous improvement plans with ideas about geofencing and ideas about web design and how to leverage social media. And building on that, we came out to the field and said, what is it that you want for a toolkit? And they gave us the answers. So the um, outreach campaign responded in kind. But as we talked about earlier and what Sarah's leaning into is this is a work in progress. So what we saw was this great success from the ALRC and full capacity marketing as far as running this toolkit and these um, connections to students. So we then decided to combine all of these um, hotline um, outreach uh, provider locators and build one so that we had a centralized location and the ALRC um, took this project on with the zest that they always approach projects with. And so now we have this new program directory. You can find a program. It's being maintained in one location, streamlining that information, streamlining that communication, and ensuring that we have one current model out there. This is how students across the state are gonna be able to find programs. And again, I want you to notice that if you need help, you can call. There is a self-help. Um, so you can text, you can call, you can fill out a form, you can do all of that. We have um, three languages right here, English, um, Spanish, and Polish. Um, but we, you know, again, can provide additional supports in different languages. So you, a student who's looking for something will find by their zip code, they can look for tutoring, they can look for class times, they can look for a variety of resources in a very um, centralized location. The login information allows programs to customize this themselves. Because what we found is that in our old school ways, you know, before the pandemic, um, we had all of these different ways for programs to have these provider locators out there. And then they would have to email us with changes and then we would have to make those changes. And it was a cumbersome process. So again, we've updated that. So now we have a centralized um, landing for all of the things that will be happening in adult ed and students can find us and programs can update their information individually. So again, we're growing and evolving as we continue to take feedback from people in the field about how they're using tools, what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, as Sarah mentioned, we do have a variety of posters and flyers. So we're in process of printing posters and flyers in multiple languages to go to all of our legislators offices and our um, local workforce one-stop center. So we'll be providing those posters to you in the next few months so that you have that that can be displayed on your, on your site. So these are the things that are, are happening. One of the things that I would encourage adult ed programs or Title II programs, find these posters and flyers that resonate with you, customize them to your program as they are allowable to do, and then have them at your one-stop centers and uh, things like that so that you can get the word out again. Um, next slide. 
So uh, moving forward, again, we have rebranded the adult ed with your path, your future. Um, we have an adult ed logo that is resonating with our intended audience. Um, we are collecting leads as students find these websites through boosted ads. We advertise on Google, on Facebook, on Instagram, on WhatsApp. So students can find that, fill out their information, and we call those leads that are distributed to programs. And that is going to continue through FY23 as we continue to um, pro provide these outreach ads. I do want to talk about a couple of things moving forward. When I said that we had a 40.5% increase in enrollment, and what I'm also hearing from programs across the state is that we are starting this year very strong, and they're looking at hopefully being at pre-pandemic numbers. Um, so I see what we call the halo effect happening. A student is seeing these ads out there in outreach, in their Facebook feeds, in their WhatsApp. They may not be filling out the um, forms, they might be like, oh, I need to get my GED. I need to learn English. I need to go back and start school and might be coming directly into the program without necessarily filling out the form. That's called the halo effect. When you have a shared outreach campaign across the state and it remains that visible, it is um, engaging individuals and they recognize what's happening and then they walk into their local programs. We're seeing a lot of benefit from that. At the same time, as we're looking at increasing enrollment, and again, that implication with increasing enrollment means that we're also retaining students and they are achieving their outcome. So that is implied in that recruitment idea. We're recognizing that across the state, we're hearing um, critical staffing shortages, teacher shortages and staffing shortages. So our advisory council this year is working towards some ideas and strategies to mitigate some of these staffing shortages. But what we're looking at is trying to um, have innovative solutions to these challenges. Because although I would say we're living in a, and I'm using air quotes, post pandemic world, um, because I don't know what to describe the world we're in right now, um, other than we need to continue to move forward. And other than our students need us now more than ever. We look at the challenges in accessing services. We look at the fact that the world has changed. Jobs have changed. Accessing networking services has changed. And our students need to come out of this um, in a stronger position than they started. So we are going to continue to look at new ways and new innovation to solve some of these um, problems and these challenges. Okay, next slide. So we'll wrap this up with um, any questions that you guys have about the campaign, the strategies, the long work that we did to get where we are and the tools that we can provide you. So it's time to open up to your questions. Kathy, while we're waiting to see if there's any questions that anybody puts in the chat, I'll go ahead and go to the next slide that has contact information. If you think of a question um, later today, next week, feel free to reach out. We're happy to, or if you want um, us to remind you of one of these links that uh, to the toolkit, to any of the resources that we shared, it's there for you. Um, And I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. I know that uh, we appreciate everybody joining us today. We'll hang on for another minute or two to see if there's any um, questions. And, and, and I would ask um, before you sign off what your takeaway from today is. I also went ahead and put in the chat um, the follow-up survey. This follow-up survey will be on your follow-up email that you will receive tomorrow. Um, and also I put the website as well. The recording usually takes about 48 hours to put up on our website, but the um, slide deck that was shared today is already accessible to you all through that link. 
Um, and the follow-up survey, if you have a, a brief moment and you want to take it right now while this session is fresh in your mind, we would appreciate it. Or if something else sparks your, your interest or you have a question for one of the presenters today, you can feel free to reach out to them um, through their contact information on the screen, or you can feel free to put that, um, any questions or comments in the follow-up survey that I have linked here in the chat as well. And again, I'm very interested in your takeaways, so please consider sharing what you're thinking. Awesome. Well, thank you so much um, to Kathy and Sarah and Amy um, and everyone from your team for all this amazing work that you are doing for Title II um, and the system. And we can definitely tell that you all are really listening to the system and what they need and providing um, that to them. Hey, Kristen, we do have a question from somebody who um, is not able to type in the chat feature. So um, it looks like the chat feature might be disabled. Um, so I'm wondering oh, if. That is if, absolutely my apologies, everyone. I'm not sure why that setting was on, but you should be able to chat with everyone now. Okay, great. Now, yeah, I'll hang on for just a couple more minutes then since we can get to the chats and that's um, absolutely okay. Yep, if you want to be unmuted and ask a question, you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. Yeah, absolutely. We have the capability to do that too. Feel free to raise your hand. So I just want to, um, while some people are typing, um, oh, here we go. Jeff Campbell wants to know, Kathy, in the chat, any chance of getting the slides? It's great data to have. Yes, Jeff, we, sorry, I can answer that one. Um, yes, you can access the slide deck um, on that link that I sent in the um, chat here. I'll type it in again really quickly for you. It's up on there. Um, there you go. Yep. Okay, I'm glad you thought that information was useful. And this is something that can be replicable at any of the programs, the strategies, the continuous improvement plan, the updating your outreach through web tools and um, websites, um, and then looking at how that landing page was resonating with people across the state to kind of rebrand what we're looking at. Those are all things that can be happening at whether you're a Title II program or whether you are um, working in a different kind of space. Okay. Well, um, Kristen, I think we have all the comments and feedback people need. Yeah. Rena, I'm glad that you know um, you're feeling this was innovative um, and giving them options on how they're gonna connect with us. That is critical for their success. Awesome, thank you so much everyone. Thank you to, again, to Sarah and Amy and Kathy for your time this morning. Um, and you will have access to this full recording that will be sent out to you as well in your follow-up information tomorrow. Thank you so much everyone. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye, guys.